got all kinds of shit to talk about in the QB club this week. Oh, damn. <laughs> Jimmy G is down. Jimmy G has left the building. Not only was he down, he left the damn building. He was worried about some fucking intern, what is fucking puncture his vagina? What the hell? Was, what, I don't know what they were worried about. Did he, did he have a rib trying to pierce something? The fuck? Who knows? But he had to get out of there. They had him in the ambulance, sent him off for precautionary measures. I guess he is the franchise quarterback. Spare no expense. Fuck it. They got him right out of there. So Jimmy was gone. Uh, there was no, hey, he might be back. Oh, he's doubtful. Doubtful. Motherfucker left the building. He's beyond doubtful. <laughs> he's changing zip codes. So Jimmy was gone. Which left you with Aiden O'Connell, who was banged up, wasn't a hundred percent. He's obviously not ready, so he's he's your third string. He's your emergency quarterback, and then you're still sitting with a lot of football left, a whole half of football. So you're like, all right. I mean, there is a possibility that the, your second gets banged up. You may need your fucking third. You never know. So Brian Hoyer comes in and. We'd had the conversation two weeks ago when they decided to make the decision to go to Aiden O'Connell when Jimmy was unable to play because of the concussion protocol that I thought Brian Hoyer, as a veteran, the reason you have the veteran on the roster was you go to the veteran in that situation to just try for the one game. Everybody thought, hey, fuck it, let's catch lightning in a bottle. I think they caved outside noise. They started the fucking Super Trooper, and he, he shit all over himself. So... They went to Brian Hoyer, but I don't think they had a choice but to go to Brian Hoyer. I think if O'Connell was healthy and 100% this last week, I think they probably would have went to him again. But Hoyer comes in, and Hoyer looked really good. Um, he was able to command the offense. He was throwing the ball crisp right out of the gate. He came right out throwing. He had, he had the deepest fucking ball, nicest ball anybody's thrown as a Raider this season. And he, he came out and looked exactly like why you have him around. He's seen it all. He's done it all. Nothing's going to freak him out. Nothing's going to scare him. He's seen all the schemes. He's seen all the blitz packages. He knows what number one corners do. He knows he's seen it all. So now you're looking at this week. They are holding uh, Jimmy Garoppolo's health very close to the cuff. They're not uh, disclosing any news. Uh, Josh McDaniel said they've dodged a bullet. There's no internal injuries. But you're talking about a back. And, and any of us that know anything about back injuries or, or tweaking a back knows that they are, they are very fickle. And that is an injury that you don't know what the fuck's going on until you wake up the next morning. So without knowing what the injury really is... Because it was such a weird, looked like a non-serious contact play that I, I, I don't even know what to think about it. I don't know what to think about it. I don't know what to think about the assessment of it. But there is talk, and the rumors are, that if Jimmy Garoppolo cannot start this week, that Aiden O'Connell will get the start over Brian Hoyer. And I ask you, as a fan base, how is that the smart play? When your team's 3-3, three and three, if you're talking that this is a short-term injury for Jimmy G, he's only going to be out maybe a week or two, which we don't know yet, just speculating, based off of the dodge the fucking bullet comments. How is that the smart play? You tried the rookie in week four. To see what he could do. Against a team that was completely decimated. Was missing starters. You've seen what the... He's not ready. I'm not shitting on the kid. And I'm not saying he's not a talented kid. And maybe down the road he's ready to go. But you, he's, he's just not ready. And you had Brian Hoyer who came out and showed you why you have him. No, Brian Hoyer's not the fucking answer. He's not going to probably lead the team to the Super Bowl. But, you know, can he get you by a couple games? Yes, I think he could. I think he could. 
So if, if, if this coaching staff and this regime decides that the super trooper is the smart play over the guy who come out and just got you the win this week, I don't even know what to fucking say about that. I don't, I don't know what argument you make for that. I don't. Because that one don't make no fucking sense to me. How you can make that argument, that that's the smart play. Your team's three and three. You're right in the middle of everything. Everything. You don't just throw this away. <laughs> I, you got you got to come out and put the best foot forward every week. He's not the best foot right now. He proved in preseason that, yeah, let, let's work with this kid. We may have something here down the road. Let's water it. Let's give him some fucking miracle grow. Let's baby him. Let's let's grow. Let's see if we can grow him into something. We ain't ready to throw this fucking kid out there. He's going to end up like David Carr. <laughs> He's going to need shock therapy. <laughs> Fuck. I think Brian Hoyer gives the team the best chance to win. This week. I'm talking about one week. This is a week-to-week -week conversation in the QB club here, ladies and gentlemen. This is a week-to-week -week conversation. They are having the conversation, Billy. They are having the conversation. That, and the rumors are going, are starting to fly around that they could possibly start Aiden. Regardless of how Brian Hoyer looked. And I agree, he's not ready. He's not ready. But we'll see. We'll see. If Jimmy's healthy, Jimmy gives the team the best chance to win. If Jimmy's not healthy, Brian gives the team the best chance to win. I don't understand why that's so difficult. None of us pick these guys. Not, not a single one of us. Not, not me or any of you guys out in the comments. If we were sitting in the offseason and said the three quarterbacks that I want to build the Raiders quarterback tree out is number one, Jimmy Garoppolo, the number two, I want Brian Hoyer, and I want the number three, this kid that nobody knows from fucking Purdue. None of us, not a single fucking one of us would have said that. None of us had Jimmy Garoppolo at the top of our wish list. None of us wanted Hoyer anywhere near a Raider jersey. Nobody, none of us even knew who this fucking kid was, except a couple people that's fucking cousins are going to fucking Purdue or something. Nobody knew who this fucking kid was. Except his fucking grandma. Who's ever selling him liters of coke. Nobody else. We're just fans looking at what's here. This is it, man. This is what's in the toolbox. This is it. These three. This is what we got in the club. He's one, he's two, he's three. I, I don't understand why it's that fucking hard. I really don't. You, you don't catch lightning in a bottle. Every fucking quarterback ain't Brock Purdy. Ain't a Kurt Warner story. It's not Tom Brady. Those are exceptions to the rules. You get a whole lot more Brock Osweilers, Dan Orlovskis, <laughs> Jay Cutlers, fucking guys like that. You get a whole lot more Jamarcus Russells, Andrew Walters. You get a lot more. You go through a whole lot of motherfuckers like that to find the Brock Purdy's, the Kurt Warner's, the Tom Brady's, and, and crazy stories like that where you trip into talent. You don't trip into talent that often at quarterback. It, it doesn't happen usually. So, we'll see. We'll see. We, we don't know much in the quarterback club. A lot of indecisiveness because it's really all about Jimmy G and his back. What's up with your back? He needs a fucking backyotomy. That's what he needs.